So here's a riddle for you. Say I give you a bunch of water, and I also give you a colander, you know, the thing with the holes for straining pasta, and I ask you to transport the water, say 100 meters, in the colander without spilling any of it. And you can't, like, put the water in a bag or duct tape the holes of the colander or whatever. How do you do it? Okay, so here's the trick. I never said it was liquid water. This task is possible if the water I give you is in the form of a bunch of ice cubes. Then, those won't fall through the holes of the colander, and you can easily transport them as required. Now, if I remember anything from high school biology, it's that life as we know it is only possible because water is a very special substance, with all kinds of useful properties. This is one of those properties, that water naturally exists in solid, liquid, and gas form. And in particular, it's endlessly useful that we can convert water between these different states with relative ease. It's how we power our homes and how we power our minds. Life as we know it is only possible because of the inner convertibility of the three different states of water. Something to think about. In the previous video, I talked about the overall purpose of homotopy type theory. Though there are a variety of reasons to study HOT, the one I identified was this. Mathematics done in the style of homotopy type theory, so-called univalent mathematics, lends itself much better to formalization in a computer proof assistant, especially for difficult to formalize fields like homotopy theory. Remember that a computer proof assistant was a special kind of typed programming language, where the types are mathematical theorems and the proof of a given theorem is a term of the corresponding type. There are two points about this story which we should expand upon. First, what does it mean for theorems to be types and proofs to be terms? Why do we think that all of mathematics could be encoded like this? And second, what is this analogy between homotopy theory and type theory? How are we understanding the object of study in homotopy theory, hyperdimensional spaces, as types? Answering these questions will give us a sketch of a critical correspondence underlying homotopy type theory, which is, somewhat jokingly, referred to as computational trinitarianism. As we build the language of homotopy type theory, which we'll start to do in this video, we'll constantly be interpreting what it means. But we won't give it just one meaning, we'll give it three. First, we can give homotopy type theory a computational interpretation understanding it as being a kind of programming language which can be computed with. Second, we can give it a homotopical interpretation, understanding HOT to be a language describing spaces and shapes and structures. And finally, we can give HOT a logical interpretation. HOT is a language for stating and proving logical propositions. This is the heart of why HOT is useful. We can move back and forth between these interpretations as needed. If we need to encode a proof, then HOT is a system of logic. If we need to study the structure of a higher dimensional space, then HOT provides vocabulary for characterizing such spaces. If we need to translate all that into something computer checkable, then we're in luck because HOT is a programming language. Everything we do or say in HOT will have three meanings, and looking at a concept from three different perspectives will frequently prove incredibly illuminating. For the types I introduce in future videos, I'll generally just pick one or two of these perspectives to focus on and leave contemplation of the others to you. But for this video, I'm going to show you how this works by examining one type under all three interpretations. The type I'll be using is called one or unit. Here's a helpful phrase to keep in mind. Unit is the contractible type. Contractible is a notion from homotopy theory. The idea of a unit type comes from functional programming. And the-ness, that is uniqueness, is a logical notion. So this simple example will go to show the triune nature of homotopy type theory. Univalent mathematics, as we know it, is only possible because of the inner convertibility of these three different interpretations of HOT something to think about. So let's start building the language of HOT. 
There are two kinds of things in homotopy type theory, terms and types. What are terms and types? Well, that's the question I'm going to be giving three answers to. The three interpretations I mentioned will be three different understandings of what exactly a type is and what exactly a term is. So put a pin in that question for now. The basic relationship between terms and types is that of a typing judgment. Given a term, little t, and a type, big T, we write little t colon big T to assert that little t is a term of type big T. So the thing to the left of the colon is a term, and the thing to the right of the colon is a type. Once again, the question of what it means for a term to be of a type will vary from interpretation to interpretation. So here's a quick example which we're going to study a lot more later. The natural numbers. The natural numbers will be a type in homotopy type theory, written with a blackboard capital N. The terms of this type will be individual natural numbers themselves. So 0 will be a term of type n, 1 will be a term of type n, and so on. So that's all the new language I'm going to introduce for now. Terms, types, and the typing judgment. Now for the question of the day, what do these things mean? The first answer we'll explore is the programming interpretation of HOT. Mm -hmm.